So tomorrow I'm gonna have a huge barbecue. I've got a lot of people coming over and I'm doing two kinds of protein. I'm gonna do these beef short ribs, which I'm going to marinate. And I'm also gonna be doing some chicken. I'm gonna break these whole young chickens down and marinate both of these with my homemade teriyaki sauce. This teriyaki sauce is one that my mom told me about. She always makes this and it's amazing. Uh, I think two thirds of a cup soy sauce. It's got some sugar, a fourth of a cup of that. Some sesame seeds, which I grinded up with this. Some sesame seed oil. You don't see this, but there's some grated ginger in there and some mirin. This is very basic, simple, but very, very tasty. And Judy said it's literally perfect. Short ribs. You've probably seen these at Korean barbecue. Bought these at Costco. They were less than $10 a pound. So there is over four pounds. This costs about $41.50. The barbecue is tomorrow. So I'm only gonna marinate these for a day. You could probably marinate these for two days, which would make it even more flavorful. I find that it's not that big of a deal. And what I'll do is I'll make a little bit extra and people can pour on more if they want it to be more flavorful. So. Let me go ahead and wash my gloves. By the way, people always ask me about the gloves and they say, hey, if you're wearing the gloves, doesn't the raw meat juice get on that and then get on everything else? See, the thing with these gloves, which I'll put the link down below, I wash these constantly, just like I would wash my hands if I was dealing with raw meat. But the thing is, because I'm washing my hands so much, it's nice to protect them. And also, these are slightly heat resistant. So when I run them underneath really hot water, not only to wash my hands, also to wash dishes because when you're cooking at home and you don't have a dishwasher like at a restaurant, you're doing a lot of dishwashing. So it's nice having these. It's very much utilized in this kitchen and I love them, but I do wash them constantly. They're usually in a kind of a plastic container. I don't know why, but I prefer just a simple zip lock bag. Try to remove all the air. That way you utilize as much of the sauce as possible. Maybe not even use as much sauce. Let's see if I can fit all of them in. But what I do is put a whole bunch in here like this. I'm gonna crisscross them in fact. I'll make a layer first like that. Five of them fit the length of this Ziploc bag. I'm gonna utilize all of this marinade today so it's okay that I'm touching it with raw meat. No big deal. Just kind of pour it over. Just like that. Just let it run down. Do that a couple of times. In fact, this time I will do it. There I go. I don't want to use all of it because I'm going to save some of it for the chicken. Now, I'm not sure if it's good or bad. There's probably better marinades for different kinds of proteins. I'm using the same marinade for these ribs as I will for the chicken. You can already see it's going on the backside too, not on the bottom. I might be able to fit all these into one bag, which would be nice because use up not only less Ziploc bags, but also more of the sauce would be utilized. Go ahead and just fit all these guys in here. Let's see if that's gonna work out though. Notice I'm doing the beef first, because beef, I do like to cook it rare. And with chicken, you want to cook it all the way through. You don't want the cross-contamination happening. One thing I do do is I will flip this bag periodically over the next 24 hours so that the sauce reaches all the pieces of ribs. So good, love it. In fact, I had to text her today, ask her for this recipe. Normally she gives me a bottle of it, but she hasn't lately. So I thought I'll just make it myself to get all the air out. I don't know if there's an easier way to do this. Easy peasy. You want to work it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get a tray though. So it's nice to get some kind of dish. Uh oh, is it leaking? I have something to hold it with so I can transport it easily. And I will flip this maybe once or twice over the next so lately I've been talking about how I buy whole chickens now because you just save so much money. In some cases half or more. My sister told me you can often find these 50% off. Not necessarily the Costco ones because those probably do get bought up. But at other grocery stores most people don't want to break down a whole chicken which I totally understand. I mean, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's not that hard. So today I was gonna show you how to do it from beginning to end. And then of course, I'm going to put this into a Ziploc bag, just like the beef. So I always do this next to the sink so I can just throw things in there. These are the innards. 
this is good stuff. I'm going to save it. There's liver, there's kidney. I think the neck bone is in there. Heart, I will be using this for the chicken stock that I grow later. Already have got a dish here. I put all of that in. I will also put some of the bigger bones there later. First thing you're gonna wanna do, cut the chicken thigh. I find that having a pair of kitchen shears really just helps this process move along very fast. When I learned how to do this, um, they were using a knife, but I just do this to kind of get started, kind of open it up a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm separating the drumstick chicken thigh from the rest. I'm just cutting right down there. This process should actually be very, very easy and not too hard. I'm just cutting it completely away from the chicken. I've seen people use barely any cuts and do this almost by hand. And what I'm trying to do here is, there's a little bone there, I'm kind of breaking it. See, I just broke it right there. That is where you're going to make your cut. This whole piece, this is kind of the uh, chicken thigh. So I just made the break, then I take my knife and I'm gonna cut it right down that. Now, even though I'm showing you how to do this, highly suggest watching way better videos on how to do this because I am not an expert by any means. It is crazy to me how expensive meat is. And if you've got a big family and they eat a lot, it's nice just saving some money. So I'm just gonna put this whole thing. You could uh, remove the chicken thigh from the drumstick. I'm just gonna keep it all together because I like grilling it like this. Same thing with this chicken wing. There's a bone here, you're gonna find it. So right there in between, take my knife, make an incision, kind of expose it, cutting it right at the joint. Obviously you're not cutting the bone part, just the cartilage. There we go. Now this part, I don't really mind. I'm not trying to make this look fancy. Like I kind of butchered this, no pun intended. So the chicken breast is what's really interesting because I always thought it would be really difficult and it's really easy. Or see this little piece of fat? What you're gonna do is just cut right along that all the way to the end and it should just come right off. And kitchen shears are the way to do it. And so all you do is cut right down it you just follow it. Now you will be cutting bone at one point, but you cut it all the way down, bam, you got it. I'm gonna do this on this other side as well. Same thing, I'm gonna look for that little stripe right here. I don't even know what you call that. I'm just calling it a stripe, a little fat stripe. Cut all the way to the end. Then you should be able to remove it just like this. If this grosses you out, I apologize. I'm showing this because it's a shame if you are afraid to do this because it seems kind of difficult when really it's very simple. You gotta be careful sometimes when you're doing this so the bones kind of break off. You got kids eating this. See, like this bone. I don't want this bone just sticking out. So I think this is a wishbone, actually, now that I think about it. So this part seems like it's just trash, but it's not. There's so much goodness in this that you could grill up, which I probably will grill this up, but I'm gonna save it for my chicken soup. And I'm not gonna worry so much about all this meat, even though if I was yakitori master, I could totally eat all these little pieces, but I'm not going to. So I put this in the bone bin along with the organs. And then this is your chicken breast. One, two, and there's this centerpiece, all you're gonna do. I have different knives over here. I'm gonna take a heavier knife. Just gonna cut right down the middle. It actually cuts pretty easily. The reason I like keeping the bone on is because the bone has so much flavor and it's nice to give it a little bit of like support when you're grilling. Got your left breast and your right breast. There's this bone right here. And this is part of the, uh, I think the wishbone. It's gonna give it so much flavor. You can keep the skin if you want. Sometimes I burn it off, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the other chicken as well. All right, so I just got done cutting both chickens. That second chicken took half the time because I wasn't talking about it. I'm gonna go ahead and marinate my chicken now with the rest of this marinade. Since I did get two different chickens, I can do um, different baggies for different cuts. I'm gonna do the wings first in the first bag because there's now going to be four wings. 
you know, I'll just do the drum, the uh, thighs and the wings as well. It's nice having a little bit of uniformity. Uniformity, is that a word? Pour it right on in. So this one, I am just going to work it with my hands just like that. I'm touching the outside of the bag with my raw glove hands. That's totally okay. I am going to marinate it for around the same amount of time and just fold it over like this. Same thing, I'm trying to get as much of the air out of there as possible. Thighs, drumsticks, wings, all in one bag. I am gonna have one bag that is just going to be for two of the breasts. These two right here. Oh snap, one of the, one of the thighs escaped. I'm gonna keep two of the chicken breasts to use later on. Oh baby, it's swimming, it's swimming. I like to have more sauce and less sauce. Whew, that's gonna be good on rice once I grill it. Last but not least, steaks. So I got these USDA prime beef New York cuts. Really good looking, plenty of marbling. These I think are kind of underrated. Now they are kind of expensive, 56 bucks for these four steaks. But the 4th of July. So, so this is really simple. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna pat dry these. I'm gonna put some salt on it and then put it on the rack to sit in the fridge for the next 18 hours. Okay, if you've ever heard of a dry aged steak, this is kind of a, like a shortcut to it. It's not quite dry aged, but what it does is it helps to brine the outside and dry it out. When you put any kind of meat inside of the fridge, it's gonna remove moisture, which is great for when you're grilling steaks. I'm gonna grill these. I'm gonna probably pan fry them, but they're gonna be so much better. Everyone's gonna love them. And you don't even need some wagyu. You just need these right here. Good old American New York cuts from Costco. And I'm telling you, game changer. Now, of course, marinating your meat, it's gonna be super flavorful, but this is another level that is such an easy step it keeps it fresh because it's not sitting in its juices. Um, I'm gonna pat dry it and because again, it's drying out the exterior, it's not gonna have any kind of funkiness. So don't worry, no smell is gonna happen in the first 24 hours. Now, if you let it sit in there longer, then it starts truly dry aging. I've done it before. I've got one dry aging right now that I might make tomorrow, but maybe not. That one does have kind of a smell to it, um, but it goes away in time. So this one, real easy. Here we go. Open this one up. Now I always buy too many steaks, so maybe I'll just do three. I'm just gonna get any of the excess moisture that I can remove right now. Notice I only have salt over here. I do not add pepper, because I find you don't need the pepper on there. It only burns. You can always add the pepper later, but the salt is important because that's gonna really get it salty, obviously. Can I fit it? I think I can. Let's just go for it, why not? Yeah, just barely. You want a little bit more air circulation, but it's air, it's gonna get in between. Even if I don't eat all of this tomorrow, I'll probably eat it the next day. Pop this in the fridge. Kona Brewing Longboard. Cheers. Mmm. That's really good. Time to clean up. If you ever get to design a kitchen, design it with drawers, not cabinets. So convenient. This is where I put all my sauces. All this kikoman goes in the pantry. Clean my workspace. What I do is I've already kind of wiped it down once. I'm going to do it one more time because raw meat juices everywhere. I take a paper towel and I do put some dish soap on there, just like this, wet it. And then what I'm gonna do is just wipe the surface one more time. Get my sinks. there we go. You know, when I'm sharing these techniques, I by no means think I'm an expert. In fact, I think there's way better experts on YouTube. The one thing I hope to do when I share these videos is just to inspire or motivate people to try it on their own 
because there's so many things about cooking that I thought were difficult and then I tried it, like for example, breaking down a whole chicken and it was super easy, especially if you have YouTube videos. So if I make mistakes and I don't do it perfect, I hope you guys critique me, tell me the right way because I do read the comments. And I appreciate it. And I'm just making that disclosure because sometimes people act or assume that I think I'm an expert. I'm just gonna share my experience. And if there's anything I do know that helps you, amazing. If I don't know it, I'm still learning, just like you guys. All right, after the wipe, I'm gonna go ahead and take just this towel, which has probably been used to wipe down surfaces or whatever, get it nice and soaked, remove all the moisture, and then this is the final wipe down. Now, once I wipe with this, I am not going to use this towel again. I will throw it in the washer and wash it. By the way, shout out to the show, The Bear. Awesome, love that show. Every time I watch it, I wanna cook something. I think it's cool that Maddie Matheson is not only in the show, but I think he's part of the executive producer team. Any shows that promote cooking and make cooking seem cool, I'm all for it. My original mentor, inspiration, and teacher when it comes to cooking outside of my mom was Anthony Bourdain. So cheers to the cooks out there. I'm gonna go to sleep. I'll be back in the morning. I'll prep everything and then I'm gonna show you how I grill and cook up all that protein at the barbecue tomorrow. All right, so here are the steaks. It's been about 24 hours, but I pulled it out of the fridge for the last, I wanna say, three or four hours. So it's room temperature. I'm gonna also grill up or pan fry some mushrooms. I got a variety here along with onions on the cast iron after I cook the steak. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep everything and then cook everything up on the charbroil. I don't even grease the pan anymore. Just use this fat piece for the fat side. It won't take very long. Fat's rendered out. You can see that right there. Put it right on. I decided to cook up their steak. Really important. I want to get lots of contact there. So I have this very, very sturdy spatula. There we go. Sturdy? Very sturdy. Not sturdy. Really important when you're doing the steaks. You want to get it dialed in, but a timer helps to keep track of things. It was a minute and a half, so I'm going to go ahead and flip these over. Let's see what they look like. Oh yeah, that is perfect. When I flip it over, it won't be as hot anymore on the pan. I'm going to do a slower cooking method where I'm just going to flip it every minute or so. There we go. Set, it. Set the timer another minute and a half. I'm gonna move these guys up here so it's indirect heat. I mean, these look like they might actually be done. Hopefully they're not overcooked. I'm just gonna put this on here. Move it over to my station. I'm looking for 129. Ooh! That might be perfect. Let's just, just string 115. I'm gonna put this back onto the grill by indirect heat. I'm gonna close the cover. And then I'm just gonna let it cook for probably another three or four minutes max. I am gonna add these onions though right now with a little bit of the clarified butter. I never finished it. <laughs> what it looks like on the inside. <laughs> How's that, huh? How's that? Good. Is good? Oh, yeah. It's weird. They're about the same size, cooked on the same pan for the, about the same amount of time, yet they all kind of turned out a little bit different. 
You guys can't really see it, but I'm cutting this at a crazy angle. Because it makes a difference. So what I like to do here is just kind of arrange it nice. More butter, more butter. Clarified butter right there. Usually I have finishing salt, but I'm just going to use this salt. I did not add pepper, so I'll add a whole bunch here, and that is enough. I always like to get the juices. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Dang. Costco steak. Sorry, my allergies acting up. All right, next up, the Korean barbecue. I can tell the marinade has really broken through. It's soaked up so into the flavor and it is ready to grill. By the way, if I, I sound weird, it's because I have allergies. They came back completely randomly. So I'm trying to just deal with that. I think this is some Zim Zim Del, which is awesome. Tell me for the wine people, I put an ice cube in here to just chill it because it also brings out some of the flavor. I don't know if you do that with all kinds of wines, but I've been doing that a lot, especially on a hot summer day. It's just kind of nice having it chilled slightly. Now, obviously you can put it in the fridge and then you don't need the ice cube, but the water does add a different dimension. For these, I've got the trub royal on the highest setting. I'm just gonna flash grill these on each side and then, uh, I'm not too worried about the inside, so I am gonna put some peanut oil on the grapes so it doesn't stick, then I'll start cooking. Sometimes I do find that there can be some sticking, so that's why I like having a little bit of peanut oil on there. What I do is I literally just take my tongs, see it's on the edge there. Just, uh, there you go. Yes, it's smoking a little bit, that's okay. I always have a raw meat tongs ready to go. Woo! Now these are super thick. I'm going to give it probably a minute and a half or maybe a minute on each side. Ooh. Ooh. Oh baby. I'll show you guys here in a second. There we go. These are getting some really nice grill marks right now. I'm going to go ahead and move these over. And now all I'm trying to do is not only change the grill marks but finish them. So what I'll do is flip them over, I'll cover the lid, kind of move them around a little bit, cover it, then it's going to be done in probably one or two minutes. Look in there. Be the best. Cream barbecue I've ever made. Thank you, Costco guy, that told me to buy these. It hey, will save this one for me and my dad right here. Nice, nice pieces. Go ahead, Dad. There. Oh yeah, it's hot too, so be careful. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Kind of chewy though. So I stole this salad from inside because it looks like everyone's picked at it. I haven't eaten any salad, so my mom made this caprese. Basil, mozzarella, and good looking tomatoes, and olive oil, balsamic vinegar. Chicken has also been marinating for about the same amount of time. This is super flavorful. I wouldn't normally uh, marinate this for any longer than 24 hours because it really soaks it up. I'm gonna cook that first. Oil up the grapes my peanut oil. That's my raw tongs. So the goal here is to just really flash grill these on both sides. Make sure that you get some grill marks going, but I'm going to do indirect heat afterwards. 
In fact, I am going to just go ahead and cover this because it's going to take much longer to cook these guys. These ones will probably be done after I flip these over, but these ones I'll flip them over at the same time, so I have to do indirect heat afterwards. Okay, it's been about two minutes. I've got to flip these pretty quick so it doesn't burn. You have to agitate it a little bit. Ooh, see that? That's what you want. You don't want too much, just the charring. That's a sugar that's caramelizing. That is really good. There we go. Ooh, that's perfect. And like I mentioned, these guys, you gotta be very careful. See, these are, I wouldn't say burning, but they're they're cooking all the way through because they're much smaller, there's less meat. Okay, cover it again. All right, okay, those are definitely done on the outside. See, this is skin side. See, you gotta be real careful because that skin can burn wick. I'm gonna move these right on top, all of them. And go on that top rack. These guys, these wings are done, done. But just to make sure, I'm gonna put them on the top rack for a half second. Close the cover. And let it cook for one minute. These ones I'll play on the rack and then let these ones continue to cook. This has been in here for I want to say about seven minutes now. Bring it over here to the cutting board. It is looking delicious. With chicken, you want to get it to about 165. Look at that. I'm gonna also temp the thigh. That's what I prefer, the thigh. Well, that's interesting. So it's not even close to being done. Let me do one more. Okay, well, I gotta put it back on, which I kind of figured it would take a little bit longer. So I'm gonna put that in for another five minutes. All right, so Chris is here and he thinks that it's at exactly 158 degrees. So we're gonna check to see if his instincts are right. Good job. Look at this, look at that. Oh my God. Okay, let's see. Check the thigh first. Ooh, super close, 154. Let's ch check the drumstick. Well, that's interesting. Look, the drumstick is at 200. That's oh, done. Wow. Isn't that interesting that the drumstick's that done, difference. but the thigh is not? Oh, yeah. 158. Yeah, it probably got up there while I was there. Okay. Good call. Yes, sir. I like how you just pointed out the 158 right when it was blasting through it. <laughs> but very good guess. Very impressive. Okay. Done. Let this rest just like any other meat. The wings are gonna be way more flavorful because it's a smaller cut, but I have a feeling these will still be good too. It's been sitting now for a good five plus minutes. I'm gonna cut it. I see a little bit of blood coming out. It doesn't bother me, but I probably would just double check the inside and see how it is. By the way, I know I talk about these gloves, but this chicken is super hot. If I didn't have these gloves, I'd be burning my hand. Look at that bone fell right out. Let me try it though. Thank you. Mm. Oh yeah. I prefer the thigh, personally. You gotta have some skin. That's very important. There we go. It's juicy. It's cooked through. Get some of that skin. Mmm. Mm -hmm. You can hold it. Korean barbecue, short ribs, New York steak, cured in the fridge for 24 hours, actually 48 hours now. Marinated chicken. This is two breasts, two thighs. We're gonna grill all these up at one time. So I've got the grill on full blast right now. It's been heating up for a while. I just like to have it on one heat and I'll explain why here in a second. I've got all my meat ready, my chicken, my steak, and then my ribs. It's in the order that I'm gonna put it onto the grill. So I have my raw tongs for when I'm grabbing the raw meat and then my flipping tongs when the meat is kind of basically all the way cooked. Got some peanut oil over there. There's a towel to apply that peanut oil so that it doesn't stick, of course. And I've got my gloves because at one point I'm gonna have to touch some really hot things. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up. Cast iron is there because I prefer cooking on a cast iron when I'm grilling my steaks. If you wanna see my 
steak videos, just search on my video library. Subscribe to my channel if you want vlogs about food. But especially when you cure it in the fridge for 24 to 48 hours, it gets a nice crust if you pan fry it. Okay, but the first thing I'm gonna do is this. Take these, I'm gonna take my napkin, because I'm gonna dip it into that peanut oil. This grate is super, super hot right now. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to apply this on there. And this is gonna make sure that the chicken doesn't stick. So first thing I'm trying to do here is just put some grill marks on these, and then move them to the top shelf. See, chicken takes a while to cook. You wanna make sure that internal temperature gets at 160 at least, 165. So I'm gonna put it onto the grill before anything else. Just make sure that is good to go. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and close this and let it cook for probably at least three minutes. By the way, shout out to Charbroil. They sent me this grill. It's connected to my natural gas. I converted it from propane to natural gas. Love it. All right. Ooh. I'm not sure if you can notice, but these pieces of chicken are really dark because it's been marinating for a while. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flip these guys. See, I'm just trying to get some solid grill marks, but really not burn it. That's what I'm looking for, just barely. I'll go ahead and cover it again. Wait another three minutes. One reason I have my grill really hot is because I want those grates to be freaking burning, burning, just inferno level heat because that's gonna help it from not sticking. Now the peanut oil really is gonna just make it almost non-stick, but if it wasn't hot enough, it could stick. But also because when I grill the other meat, I want it to sear just the same way as well. So that's why I want it hot. Plus I don't have to dink around with the things. I will be turning off the element on one side because I want the chicken to cook at indirect heat at one point, which will be probably after I flip it a few more times, which that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'll move it up to the top shelf. Oh, baby. At this point, I'm going to move them. See, this one is basically done. Uh oh, the skin. You don't want to lose the skin right there. Okay, close it one more time. Cheers. Cheers. Are you excited? Yeah. The chicken is definitely not done, but it's got enough color. See, that's, I would say, even too much. So I'm going to move that up there. Same thing with this, same thing with this guy. Okay. I am going to turn off the element right here. In fact, I might turn off two of them. That means that this side, there's no heat coming up. This side is still super hot. What I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna take the steak. I'm gonna, as you guys saw before, I'm just gonna render that fat on there. There you go. This won't take very long. We're talking, we've got another five to seven minutes maybe. All right, so it doesn't take very long to render that fat out. All I'm trying to do is get enough grease or fat on there so that I can get a nice sear going. And this thing is freaking hot. I mean, like it's maybe overly hot, but it's all good. I am gonna cover it. Now this is where normally I wouldn't cover it with this steak, but because of those uh, pieces of chicken, I am going to cover it because I want the indirect heat. It won't be a big deal though. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half. Oh yeah, you can't really see it, but it's already got a nice sear. Let's just show you guys. Oh baby, that's what you want, that golden crust. All right, it's so hot, it's not even searing. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. It's super hot right now. There we go. I'm gonna let it do its thing one more time. Next time, I will flip those pieces of chicken. So this is what's happening. Over here, we've got really high heat going on. It's keeping that cast iron really hot and it's getting the grates ready for the ribs. Over here, no heat going on indirect from this side and it's just continuing to cook that chicken. No more grill marks, no more blackening gonna happen. It's just going. I will flip them over and it's really important to temp your meat so that thermometer is gonna be my best friend. Here we go. So this steak 
Let's just check how it looks on this other side. Oh, that's what you want. That's what happens when you let it sit in the fridge on a grate for 24 hours at least. Cook on the other side a little bit. Oh my God, that's gonna be awesome. These, I'm gonna start flipping over. In fact, I'm gonna move this guy over here. These guys over to the side. Last flippity flip. Okay, so I'm gonna have to wear this glove because that pan is super hot and I'm about to remove it. These, this might be done really soon here. I am going to move this over here. I'm gonna move this over to this side. What I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna start it back here. because This is not as hot. The burner's closest to you. For whatever reason, the grate's closest to you. At least on this grill, it's not as hot. These ribs are so thick, I am gonna cover it one more time. That steak is probably just about done. I'm gonna go grab the thermometer. I'm gonna check that once I uh, lift the cover up again. Don't mind the writing from the girls. <laughs> okay, so those ribs have not been on for very long, but I'm gonna flip them, kind of to check on them. Oh yeah, okay. Oh baby, these are gonna be amazing. That way I'll cook them on both sides twice. Now I will grab that steak. So one thing I will do though, I'm also gonna flip this chicken. Oh, it's perfect. Look at that. It's 137. Normally I'd want it at like 125, 130 max, but I'll take it. What's perfect about this is the fact that this needs a rest anyways. So it's just gonna sit here, relax, be all good. I'm about to flip these ribs and this needs still probably eight minutes anyway. So it's all gonna time out perfectly. So I do move these guys back and forth. So I'll move this guy that's closest to me over here. Move this one. Right here, move this guy right there. There we go. Oh yeah. See that? That's what you're looking for right there. I'll flip all these guys. I want that color. I want that caramelization. So in about two minutes, all this should be done. Oh yeah, I'm pretty damn sure those are done, done, done. Can you see that? <clears throat> All right, so I just sliced the steak. I put some clarified butter on here. Chickens have been resting. These ribs are totally done. I'm gonna give some finishing salt to the steak. I didn't add some pepper, so here you go. If you're trying to entertain a lot of people and you're doing multiple pieces of protein, different proteins, hopefully this helps you if you have a grill at home. So yeah, let me try one of these steaks. Did I mention clarified butter? Yeah. Mmm. Mm-hmm. What's your vibe? Ribs, steak, or chicken? Let me know in the comments.